please would you stand? of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We meet in the name of Jesus Christ, who died and was raised to the glory of God the Father. Grace and mercy be with you, and also with you. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to St. Matthew's Church on this sad day. It really feels as if 
we shouldn't be here again. It is less than three months since we all gathered in this place for Vida's Requiem, and now we are here again to lay her beloved husband, Joseph, to rest. But we are here, we have the support of one another, and we have the support of Almighty God. We gather in the presence of our Paschal candle, which we lit on Easter morning, to remind us that Jesus Christ is alive and that he offers life to those who believe in his name. We now begin our service with our first hymn, The Old Rugged Cross. As children of a loving Heavenly Father, let us ask his forgiveness, for he is gentle and full of compassion. 
Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May God our Father forgive you your sins and bring you to the eternal joy of his kingdom, where dust and ashes have no dominion. Amen. Let us pray. Merciful Father, hear our prayers and comfort us. Renew our trust in your Son, whom you raised from the dead. Strengthen our faith that Joseph and all who have died in the love of Christ will share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please do be seated. We come now to our eulogy that Andrea and Daniel have written and will read for us from the lectern. hundred years is a long time for any person to grace this earth. And whilst we are eternally grateful for the time we had, it somehow still doesn't feel long enough for those who love Joseph Nathaniel Ramsey. He was known as Joseph to his friends, Neville to his late wife, Bida Ramsey, Daddy to his five children, and Granddad to his six grandchildren and four great-grandchildren. Joseph Ramsey was a very special man to many. To me, he was my favorite person in the world, my best friend. To all of his family, he was our backbone and the strongest man we've ever known, right up until the end. Grandad was born to MacDonald and Millicent Ramsey in 1924 in Parish Land, Barbados. And Grandad had three siblings, Waypool, Marjorie, and Erid. As a child, he worked hard on his family's land and after school learned the trade of carpentry, which became his lifelong profession. Right before the end of World War II, he spent a brief period in the US logging in the South while the soldiers had to be overseas. In 1950, Grandi Grandad married our grandmother, Vida. Their children are Gwyneth, Angela, Hadford, Ivor, and Philip. Our Grandad ensured his family were looked after throughout his life and made um, the decision to travel to England to seek an alternative life for them during the Windrush era. He arrived in Plymouth from Barbados in 1955, settling firstly in Kilburn and then Rains Park, where he remained for the rest of his life alongside his wife and children. His and their story is one I'm very proud of. Grandad spent his career in England working for the government in buildings across London. After, Grandad, after this, Grandad went back on the tools working in southwest London and Surrey until his retirement in, in 1991, where at the age of 67, he decided or said to himself, what am I doing out here? And he promptly told his colleagues, as it was freezing cold that day, I'm going home, you can all stay, not me. And that was that. Grandad then entered what turned out to be a very long, well-deserved retirement. That really summed up Grandad. Once he'd made it his decision, that was it, and there was no changing his mind. Although he retired, he never hung up the tools, however, and he continued carpentry and DIY at home for family and friends right up until December just gone. Although Grandad could be a serious man, he was also a very funny man who used to laugh a lot, especially when there was a good fighting scene on TV. Grandad loved a Western and anything on TCM. He was old school. He used to keep a black leather belt in the kitchen next to the microwave. And as was his humor, if any of us kids got out of hand, he would point towards the kitchen and tell us to go and get the belt. We learned quite quickly, however, that this was an empty threat and that no punishment would be served. He just found it very funny to see the look of regret on our faces. For me, um, Grandad was indeed Grandad, but also someone. Um, someone close to a father. Growing up, it was Grandad who taught me and Andrew how to ride the bike, how to count via an abacus, of course. <laughs> Without an active father, I was very short on male role models, but then again, with a man like Grandad to look up to, I didn't need any else. When I went to see my beloved Wimbledon Football Club for the first time, the person who stood alongside me was Grandad. Or for Dante's trips, you'd be the one meeting me at the station with a king-size Snickers bar to eat just before my examination. I'm sure the dentist really appreciated that. 
When I received my first cricket set, given you'd concreted over the garden, you fashioned a wooden block which I, oh, I could put the stumps in. My first test match, it was granddad. As children, money wasn't plentiful, but Andrew and I, we, we got everything we ever needed. School trips sorted, equipment for school sorted, university sorted, and there's way more. We never, and I say never, went without as children. It was a brilliant childhood which you helped provide for us grandchildren. And I'm sure you're actual children, even though I'm sure you're a lot stricter on them than us. Granddad alongside Granny provided sanctuary when Mum became a single parent back in 1991. For that, we can never thank you enough. It was really my first memories of, as, as a child, being at yours and living there for three years while we got back on our feet. The door was always open at Granny and Granddad's. Every Saturday evening, we spent watching Gladiators, the Generation Game, at, for years on end, and those are really memories that I'll cherish and I'm sure you did as well. As a child, I wanted to emulate you as much as possible, and I still do. This sometimes went a bit too far, like when a child, as a child with perfect vision, I deliberately misread the letters on an eye test at the optician, just so they give me glasses identical to yours. You, lo you loved your children, like latterly your great-grandchildren and your grandchildren very much. And this is always apparent around Christmas when we, we would all be showered with gifts. Gifts were very, sometimes very interesting in a reminder of how highly you viewed education. Much like the year I think I requested a, uh, the latest Power Ranger toy um, and instead received a large hardback copy of the Kings and Queens of England, 1066 to the modern day. Yeah. Yeah, education was key with Grandad, so there was no surprise there, even if Granny couldn't believe her eyes when, she unwrapped, when I unwrapped it. Granny cussed you out that day, but I'm thankful for, thankful for the push of education, as we all are. There is a reason why the walls in the living room are now adorned with numerous graduation pictures. We have to mention Grandad's great love of music, and classical music especially. Although his tastes were eclectic, today you'll hear songs which reflect his appreciation for classical and hymns. Natalie told me a story about how Grandad had informed her love for classical music as well. She spent a lot of time with Grandad whilst doing GCSE revision on a Chopin piece. Grandad's knowledge and patience was a real help to her passing that project. It was similar for many of us. Although Grandad didn't learn to play an instrument, he told us how he used to play the fool and the harmonica, meaning that he used to play it for fun in his youth. He made sure if we were interested in instruments that we would get a formal education. Natalie with her cello, our Uncle Dave with his drums, and then Grandad's admiration for music and sound also rubbed up on me massively at an early age. I used to watch him listen with such joy and would go through all of his records and CDs. Grandad would encourage me to practice my violin and would take me to my piano lessons on occasion. I became obsessed with music and that obsession continued on to, into my post-school education and choice of career. It's safe to say that Grandad had a huge impact on all of us. He also remarkably seemed to defy aging for the most part. At the grand age of 100, Grandad had a memory better than most of ours. Speaking to him recently, he could recall the exact time he'd left a friend's house to head home back in the 1940s. The time was 10 p.m. I honestly can't remember where I was yesterday most of the time, so this was quite astonishing to me. Being the defiant man that he was, he would bring his walking stick on outings, but rarely needed to use it, or at least refused to use it most of the time. He was a man who barely needed help doing much at all up until his last couple of weeks with us. Grandad was, a true, was truly an inspirational force and a man of devout faith all his life. For the past 50 odd years, he was an active member of this church. He spent near on every Sunday and most Wednesdays before a few years ago attending mass. Once the pandemic hit, Grandad would watch the services at home on YouTube each week. He never wavered. There are many things that I'll miss, but especially I'll miss assisting you with your DIY ventures. hearing you say to me, what took you so long? Well, now that you're here, I've got a job for you. As soon as I walk in the door each week, I will miss finding action films to watch with you on a Sunday, which was truly one of my favorite things to do in the world. And I will especially miss our impromptu trips to richer sounds, where you would buy a new TV or surround sound system without consulting with Grady first, making me an unknowing accomplice in your plans. Grandad was a man that believed in quality. If you're going to spend money, make sure that you're going to get the best so it would last. Whilst we wish it could have been a couple more years, I think we were all convinced it would be. 
We've been exceptionally lucky to have Grandad for the length of time that we have. You know you've done well when your grandchildren are close to entering middle age. You can be at peace now with Granny, looking down on the wonderful family you've created through three generations who all loved you dearly. It's testament to this by the amount of family that were by your side in hospital day after day as you battled through in the final days. We take immense pride in your story. It couldn't have been easy, and I remember some of the stories from your time in Kilburn, Northwest London, after first arriving. You didn't stay very long, and you created a brilliant life for the family in Rains Park. I felt proud telling all and sundry of your 100th birthday and the story leading in the 99 years preceding to anyone that would listen. I'm glad it was not just celebrated by us, but recognised by not just one, but two heads of state. How many can say that? I thank you for your journey, your guidance, both said and unsaid. You've given us all a great life. I'm convinced you were fulfilled by your own life and journey, full of love and faith. You deserve a long, peaceful rest. You weren't one for emotion. Indeed, you were of a different age. But we'll never be able to put into words just how much we love you and how much we're going to miss you. I know, I know how much you wanted to be reunited with Granny. Well, I'm sure you're with Granny now, full of health and full of joy, looking down on us and wondering what all the fuss is about. We will see you again one day, I'm sure. And I'm sure it'll be a job for one of us waiting as we walk through the door. In your words, bye, Granddad, and be good. Thank you, Daniel and Andrea, for that beautiful and moving tribute. We now continue with a reading from our Bible, Psalm 139, which will be read to us by Christina and Matthew. O oh Lord, you have searched me and know me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O oh Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in soul, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and settle it at the farthest limits of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness shall overcome me, and the light around me become the night, even the darkest is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day, for darkness is as light to you. For it was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works, that I know very well. My frame was not hidden from you, when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth, your eyes beheld my unformed substance. In your book were written all the days that were formed for me, where none of them as yet existed. How weighty to me are your thoughts, O God. How vast is the sum of them. I tried to count them. They are more than the sand. I come to the end. I am still with you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We're now going to hear a poem read by Zavian and Nahanda for my granddad. And please do remove the microphone from the stand. I, 
This poem is called For My Granddad. I look back in fondness every day at the joyful times we had. No one else could be so special as my wonderful granddad. He carried me as a child and held on to my hand. He nudged me every day and taught me how to stand. Granddads are like no one else and you truly were the best. And even though this sad, like, sadness aches, it's time for you to rest. But I want you to hear me, Grandad. Although you're out of sight, I'll use the lessons that you taught. Forever, Forever my guiding light. Thank you. We're going to stand again to sing our next hymn, Lord, I'm Coming Home. be with you. And also with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary, and her sister Martha. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, so two, two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. 
But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, you will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please do be seated. Well, as I said at the beginning of this service, it feels as if we shouldn't be here. Not again. It is less than three months since we were all here to commend Vida to God, and now we are back again, commending her beloved husband, Joseph. It really feels as if we shouldn't all be here together again, at least not for this. But where else is there to gather? We have come together in what was Joseph and Vida's spiritual home for so many decades. We gather as people who knew and loved Joseph in life, who will be determined to go on sharing that love now that his earthly journey is over. We gather before our paschal candle, lit on Easter morning, reminding us of the victory that Christ has won over death. And we gather in the presence of God. God, who Joseph believed in and trusted with a strength which is rare indeed. I remember only minutes after Vida had died, Joseph holding her hand and saying with absolute conviction that he knew that she was safe with God. It is difficult to ask, but I'm sure Joseph would want us to have the same trust that he now rests safe in the Lord, awaiting the resurrection from the dead, the new life that Christ has won for us. We've heard all about Joseph's rich life in our beautiful tribute. It can be difficult to see past the sheer length of days that he lived. The Barbados of Joseph's childhood was still a part of the British Empire. In his lifetime, he would see the country of his birth gain independence. He would live through the reign of five British monarchs, 10 Barbasian prime ministers, and 20 British prime ministers. With that much life lived, what are we to say about it? It made me think of that passage in St. Paul's second letter to Timothy, where nearing the end of his life, the apostle says that the time of his departure is at hand. He has fought the good fight, he has finished the course, he has run the race that was set before him. There aren't many of us, I suspect, that envisage our own life will extend over a century. Joseph lived an ultra-marathon of a life. A life as long as Joseph's allows a certain perspective. As I've heard from the family, Joseph was blessed with an exceptional memory, remembering that time he met a friend 60 or 70 years ago. How fascinating to have experienced everything he did and to treasure it all up in his mind. Joseph's life spanned what must have felt like multiple different worlds. 
the southern USA, where Joseph worked during World War II, was still racially segregated under the Jim Crow laws. The Britain of the 1950s, where Joseph settled, could be very unwelcoming to those born outside these shores, even in this very church, I am sorry to say. Much has changed thanks to the civil rights movement, yet we still see the specter of racism haunt both this country and further afield. But a truly mind-blowing amount has changed in the last century. Revolutions in politics, technology, relationships, attitudes in families and society. It is not always easy navigating that. With so much change, what is going to be the constant in our lives? What will hold everything together? Well, for one, there are those extraordinary individuals like Joseph, exceptionally long lives, giving passages of unbroken continuity. People who have navigated the ups and downs of life, war and peace, feast and famine, success and failure, adjusting to some changes and no doubt ignoring or resisting others. As well as looking back on Joseph's long life, we also look forward. The Christian hope is that even 100 years is just a blink of an eye from the standpoint of eternity. And what awaits us after this life is so much greater, so much more real and immediate and glorious than anything we have ever experienced or could ever imagine. This is what we're encouraged to think about in our gospel reading for today. Jesus' friend Lazarus has died, and Jesus reassures his family that Lazarus will rise again. After the passage we heard, Jesus goes to the tomb and he begins to weep. Jesus himself knew the pain and sorrow of grief. Death is not something to be welcomed. It is to be mourned with tears and cries and lamentations. But Jesus does not remain in his grief. By his power, he raises Lazarus from the dead to new life. For as Jesus says, he is the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in him, even though they die, will live, and everyone who lives and believes in him will never die. On that first Easter day, Jesus opens up that path for each one of us, for you, for me, for Vida, for Joseph, that we might share in the new life that Christ gave to Lazarus, that we too might live by the power of Christ's resurrection. Why are we offered this new life? Quite simply, because God loves us. God loves us more than it is possible to say, and God never wishes to be parted from us. St. Paul, in his letter to the Romans, says that neither death, nor life, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Or as we heard in Psalm 139, there is nowhere we can go where we are separated from God's Spirit. Even if we die, if we make our bed in Sheol, the psalm says, God is there. I come to the end, says the psalm, and I am still with God. God's love is the strongest thing there is. The love that we receive from God is the constant. It is the unchanging thing. God's love means that nothing that God has brought into being will ever be finally lost. So even if the world we see around us is changing beyond recognition, God's love endures. Even though the earthly day that the Lord gave to Joseph has now ended, there breaks a yet more glorious dawn. 
even if we may find ourselves weeping with Christ over the death of a loved one, that is not the final word, because Christ has conquered death, and so we make our song, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. I am the resurrection and the life, says Jesus. This day, as we gather again in this place, we remember our brother Joseph. Let us give thanks for his long life. Let us comfort one another in our grief, knowing that Christ weeps with us. And let us take inspiration from Joseph's faith. His hope was in Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh. Joseph believed in him and is now united with God, safe forever through the saving death and resurrection of Christ. And for that, thanks be to God. Amen. We now turn to God in prayer. To Lord, hear us. We respond, Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord Jesus Christ, you wept at the grave of Lazarus, your friend. Comfort us in our sorrow. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. You raised the dead to life. Give to our brother Joseph the gift of eternal life. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. You promised paradise to the repentant thief. Bring Joseph to the joys of heaven. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Our brother Joseph was washed in baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Give him fellowship with all your saints forever. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Joseph was nourished with your body and blood at the table of the Lord. Welcome him into the halls of the heavenly kingdom. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Comfort all those who mourn for Joseph, especially his children Gwyneth, Angela, Ivor, Hadford, and Dave, his many grandchildren and great-grandchildren. Let our faith be our consolation and eternal life our hope. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord God, hear the prayers we offer for our departed brothers and sisters, praying especially for Vida, with whom Joseph is now reunited. Cleanse them of their sin and grant them the fullness of redemption. We ask you this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please, would you stand for the peace? Jesus says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give you. Do not let your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. The peace of the risen Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you.
Let us pray. O Lord, we offer you sacrifices and prayers of praise. Accept them for the sake of Joseph, who we commemorate today. Grant him, O Lord, to pass from death to the life you once promised to Abraham and his offspring. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of heaven and earth, giver of life and conqueror of death. By his death on the cross, your Son, Jesus Christ, offered the one true sacrifice for sin, breaking the power of evil and putting death to flight. Through his resurrection from the dead, you have given us new birth unto a living hope, into an inheritance which is imperishable, undefiled and unfading. The joy of resurrection fills the universe, and so we join with angels and archangels, with Joseph and all your faithful people, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of Our Lady, the Blessed Virgin Mary, Matthew and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever. Remember, Lord, your servant Joseph, who has gone before us with the sign of faith and rests in the sleep of peace. Grant him, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. We sit or kneel to pray to God our Father in the words our Saviour taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, 
forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant them rest. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant them rest. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant them rest everlasting. As we come now to receive Holy Communion, you are very welcome to come forward to receive the bread and the wine if you would usually do so in your own church. You do not need to be a member of the Church of England to receive here, but if you wish to meet with Jesus Christ through the sacrament, please do come and kneel and hold out your hands for the bread and the wine. If you would prefer to receive a blessing, please cross your arms over your chest at the altar rail. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed.
Let us pray. God of love, may the death and resurrection of Christ, which we have celebrated in this Eucharist, bring us with all the faithful departed into the peace of your eternal home. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our rock and our salvation, to whom be glory for time and for eternity. Amen. We come now to the commendation when I will sprinkle holy water and use incense to bless Joseph's coffin, and I will pray the prayer of commendation as we commend his soul to Almighty God. So please may I invite you to stand. Let us commend Joseph to the mercy of God, our Maker and Redeemer. God, our Creator and Redeemer, by your power Christ conquered death and entered into glory. Confident of his victory and claiming his promises, we entrust Joseph Ramsey to your mercy. In the name of Jesus our Lord, who died and is alive and reigns with you, now and forever. Amen. Rest eternal, grant unto him, O Lord. Rise in glory. After the final blessing, we will proceed to Kingston Crematorium for the committal of Joseph's body. And then we will gather back here at 1.40 for the reception afterwards. Everybody is very welcome to attend that. And we now bow our heads and pray for God's blessing. The Lord be with you. May God give you his comfort and his peace, his light and his joy in this world and the next. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. May they rest in peace. Amen.